Um, hi there, I'm Austin Becker. I'm an assistant professor of coastal planning, policy, and design at URI. And uh, so I have a, uh, an appointment in marine affairs, which is basically coastal planning and policy, and landscape architecture, which is the design side. And I'm uh, very interested in the implications of climate change and uh, the ways that we can start thinking about adapting over the coming decades. So my, my role today is, is really not to talk at all about my own work, but to present to you some of the, the local implications of climate change here in Rhode Island and kind of start us off on the same page. Um, I will talk about just a few, a few things. Um, I'll, I'm going to show you some pictures from some recent flooding events and then talk a little bit about the historical trends here in Rhode Island and some, some uh, projections for Rhode Island and then finally share with you a little bit about some new storm tools that those of you, who, who was here last night? Okay, so I'll quickly go through the storm tools because I think they're, they're very useful and, and it's, a, it's a way that you can get a sense of what's going to happen on your particular property. So let's start with looking at some pictures. Pictures are fun. <clears throat> Who was not here for the floods in 2010? Okay, great. So almost everybody was here and experienced uh, this actual event. So I'm sure you, you'll all remember this was a really devastating time. This is the sewage treatment plant in Warwick, pretty much underwater. Um, there's the movie theater, probably couldn't get there that afternoon. The Warwick Mall, um, also lots of flooding in the, in the parking lot there. This was a precipitation event, right? It wasn't a storm surge, it wasn't a, a, a tide event, it was a rain event. Here's 95, shut down in Warwick, and that's the result of that. <coughs> Uh, the next event is Hurricane Sandy. This, is, uh, this was 2013, of course. Who was not here for Hurricane Sandy? Okay, like four of us were not here for Hurricane Sandy. I was not here for Hurricane Sandy. Who? Sorry. I sure that happened well, the, the picture's right. <laughs> um, um, so Hurricane Sandy is, was a, a storm surge event. Um, so we look at a precipitation event, here's a storm surge event, and as John Hillinger mentioned, there, these are two of the different kinds of flooding events that we experience. Here is uh, Matunic, Narragansett, Big Rock and all these, Westerly, so this was statewide impacts, right, Block Island. And the last is, this is just an extreme high tide flooding event. So who has not been here for a high tide event? Great. Uh, so, so we can see here, this is, this is just an extreme high tide. These, these, these happen um, regularly every year. They're getting worse and worse over time. You can see that the water is, is at the same level as the parking lot here in North Kingston. Uh, Whitford, again, background, the water is right up against the parking lot. And this is just an extreme tide event that, uh, that comes on a new moon. Sure, you all have your own images that are like these, probably better than these. Um, okay, so we've got these three different kinds of, of surge events, of flooding events that we need to pay attention to here at Rhode Island: precipitation-related events, storm surge events, and tide events. They sometimes all come together for, for, for very extreme water levels. The most extreme water levels that we've seen in recent history in Rhode Island are shown here. Um, this is the surge height at the uh, hurricane barrier in Providence, as reported. Uh, 1938 was the, the worst of these, so there we saw about, uh, over 17 feet of, of surge in Providence in a 1944 storm, about 12 feet. Carroll in 1954, 16 and a half feet, and after Carroll is when they built the, the hurricane barrier. And then since then, we've had Gloria and Bob, which are the two major surge events in, uh, in Providence. And, and really for the state. So what's been happening with sea level rise here in Rhode Island? 
Uh, as John mentioned, we see about an inch a year of sea level rise historically, so this just shows going back to 1930, uh, the, sorry, an inch a decade, so this just shows an inch a decade over time. We expect that rate to increase over time. And when we look at the projections for Rhode Island, uh, there's, a, there's a really good website through the, through the core, uh, core Climate US where you can actually look at any tide gauge and look at the projections for sea level rise for that particular spot. So this is uh, five different sea level rise projections for Newport. And I brought this out. You can set the, the years on this tool, which is, which is handy. I set it out to 2120. So if you're, here's uh, 2010, we go out to 2120. And the reason I, I chose 2120 is because there's a, I, I read a study recently that said that over half of the children born in the U.S. today would live to be 105. So, any new parents in the room? Uh, your children may be, may be still alive out in 2120, and we may see a sea level rise as much as uh, 9 feet at that point. So this is the, the upper level as projected now for, for Newport. Uh, here in Rhode Island, we're seeing a relative rise that is a little bit uh, faster than other, other parts of the country. Precipitation also is increasing the annual precipitation. Uh, this, this graph goes back to 1930 to 2010 here, and we're looking at about an inch a decade. Uh, in increase in precipitation over time, so every decade we're seeing another inch of uh, precipitation per decade. So we've got increasing sea level rise, we've got increasing rates of precipitation, and we've also got a potential for an increasing frequency and intensity of hurricanes or tropical storms. And the, 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 the confidence around sea level rise is, is um, is pretty good. We know sea level rise. We don't know how much, but we know that it's happening. We know that the rate is going to increase. The scientific projections around tropical storms, the jury's a little bit still out on. Um, but here's what we, what we know. We know that intensity is likely to increase, so we will see more of the stronger storms in the future, so more category fours and fives. The overall frequency of tropical storms we don't know so much about. We may see more, more storms, we may see fewer storms. Um, recently there was a study that was projecting more storms overall, but I think most of the science is saying either the same amount or fewer. So we're still working on that. Um, we in the scientific community are still working on that. And then rainfall is likely to increase. So if we kind of roll all of these things together, uh, the doubling, the potential doubling of category four and five tropical storms over the next hundred years, sea level rises anywhere from three quarters to two meters by 2100, uh, an increase in these, in, these in these inland flooding events, these precipitation events. What if we bring those all together, we, we might start to, to think about today's one in a hundred year storm event or one percent annual probability event becoming the one in three year storm event by 2100. And this is from work that was done for uh, a few cities around New England. Okay, so I want to finish up by just showing you really quickly some new tools that are available so that enable you to look at storm projections for your particular neighborhood or your particular property. So this is called storm tools. The, the, the maps themselves are in draft form, and you can find them, and I'll show you some examples, at this website, pdc.maps.rgis.com. When you get to the website, which looks like this, you type in scale SLR to access the maps. And I'll show you just a couple of examples of these. This is where we are in, uh, in Newport. On the left, you can see the 25 year, 50 year, and 100 year storm event. And on the right is uh, 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 tide plus sea level rise of one, two, three, and five feet. And you can do these in different combinations. So you can look at this, the sea level rise plus uh, a storm event or sea level rise plus a tide event. Uh, here's one other example. Here's. Um, uh, sea level rise plus the storm event, and then this is 
those results overlaid on the existing FEMA flood maps. And then lastly, you can look at the, the level of inundation for the neighborhood or property that you're interested in. So the shading represents uh, anywhere from less than a foot to greater than 10 feet of flooding on these different properties. This is fair. Okay, I'm out of time. Um, again, this is the website. I believe it is in somewhere in your packets. You should find this reference. This is work that's been done by Chris Damon and Malcolm Spalding at URI. And I will leave you with this image of a, this is a, a category three storm in Providence. This is part of work that we're doing in landscape architecture and marine affairs. We have, we have some students here, they're in the back of the room, and they'll be presenting their analysis of, um, the, of some storm resilient strategies for the Port of Providence. And you can see that in the afternoon and during the reception. But this is a category three storm in Providence, which, which is about a 21 foot storm surge. So here's our here's the, the hurricane barrier, and the city is up here. Um, we're looking at kind of the implications of this level of flooding in uh, in the industrial port of Providence. So that's, that's the, the current state of affairs in Rhode Island.